This video was sponsored by Squarespace. About four and a half years ago, I helped my mom purchase a little vacation home on the McKenzie River, just outside of Springfield, Oregon. Growing up, the word vacation home didn't make any sense to me. I grew up pretty poor. My dad was the pastor of a small Baptist church, and my mom was a math teacher at a very small high school. We could barely afford one home, let alone a vacation home. I just didn't even understand that world. And I never thought I would, but my mom always dreamed of having a quiet little place in the woods and she wanted it to be on water. Lake, river, she didn't care. Finally, she had the opportunity to purchase a little quiet place in the woods up here in Oregon, but it needed a lot of work. So as a family, we started going down there on weekends and remodeling this entire place. We put our heart and soul into that property. I remember going down there and thinking about what this place was gonna become, dreaming about the future of this property, thinking about what it would be like for my son to have a place that we could go down and spend time with the family and make memories. And even though it wasn't completely remodeled yet, we were already down there making those memories, using it, fishing, having a great time. It took about a year and a half to get it all remodeled. We tore down the drop ceiling. We vaulted the roof line. We added dormers. We put up wood paneling. We refinished the floors. We blew out walls. I did a giant section of built-ins along one wall with a stone fireplace and a wraparound oak bench. We were really turning this into the property of our dreams, a place that our family was gonna use for years to come. And then the worst happened. Labor Day night, winds howled, trees falling everywhere in the pitch black. Fire on both sides of the McKenzie Highway, 126. This is video from a firefighter's dash cam that night. We have to pull out on this thing. We got too many issues with the wind and the trees and we're trying to do what we can, but I can't afford to get anybody hurt down in there either. I remember going to bed that night, staring at a little fire map on my phone screen, watching this red blob get bigger and bigger and get closer and closer to the house that we had just finished remodeling a month and a half before. Fire's a crazy thing. It's all consuming. It doesn't pay any mind to what's important to you and what's not. It comes, it destroys, and it leaves and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. It was almost a week after the fire before the roads had finally been cleared and property owners were allowed back into the area to see what was left of their properties. As we drove down the road, seeing home after home burnt to the ground, our hearts just sank. Each one of these homes represented a real person, a family, a house full of things accumulated over a lifetime. Her wedding dress, family photos, mementos from my father who had passed away. Everything was stored at the river house. And when we pulled into that driveway, through the broken gate, past the downed trees, it was clear that there was absolutely nothing left. It was almost like walking through the wreck of the Titanic. It had this ominous feeling. I found reading glasses still in their case, set on the coffee table, just waiting for my mom to come back and pick up her book again. The dishwasher with dishes still inside. As I was looking through the rubble, I was trying desperately to find something that I could restore. I wanted so badly to fix this for my mom to be able to give her just something when she had had so much taken away from her. At the far northern side of the property, I found these two cast iron bench brackets. I immediately recognized them. I knew the exact bench that these belonged to. 
I had vivid memories of my son and his cousins sitting on this bench eating their hot dogs when we were barbecuing on the back porch. But these cast iron bench brackets were about the only thing that were somewhat intact. Not knowing if I could ever do anything with them, I picked them up and I threw them in the back of my truck. We drove home that night, heartbroken, discouraged, not knowing what the future would hold. Eventually, the property was cleaned up and we ultimately decided as a family not to rebuild the house. Sure, we could have made another one, but the property and the landscape just wasn't the same. It will literally be decades before that property even begins to resemble what it once was. So ultimately, we decided to buy another property farther upriver where the fire hadn't destroyed. For years, these brackets sat in my garage. I finally thought now is the time to do something with these brackets, to give her a little housewarming gift for her new property. Dude, what are you doing? I'm carving my business name in this tree so that generations to come will see it and then they'll come buy stuff from me. Dude, you're not even gonna be alive in 100 years. It's all about the long game, man. You gotta, you know, put stuff out there and just be patient and wait for it to stick. Dude, do you realize you could create a website right now, today, on Squarespace and immediately be getting your product in front of thousands of people? Right now my business is all about woodworking, but what if tomorrow I, you know, accomplish my main goal, which is becoming a bikini model? Squarespace has flexible templates, so you can pick a template and then customize it to be exactly what you want. And if halfway through the life of your business, you decide, you know what, I'm switching gears, I'm doing something else. You just change to a different template and customize that one. What if I see somebody on the street and they decide they want to buy something from me right there? Is there a way that I can do like a point of sale with that person directly and accept credit cards even though they're not on my website? You can connect a Square Reader to the Squarespace app and it syncs with your online store. So if you sell products in person, it changes the inventory on your website. I do a lot of projects and I want to show people those things and right now what I do is I just hang them from the trees on different limbs and people walk by and see them. Squarespace does have this thing called a portfolio where you can make a nice collection of your work for everybody to see. It's easy to get it out to the public and you don't have to hang things from trees. Here's what you want to do. Go to squarespace.com, sign up for a free trial, build yourself a website, see if you like it. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash bourbonmothwoodworking. You get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. 10% off my first purchase? Oh my gosh. I gotta save so much time. I've been up in trees carving things this whole time here. I could be saving 10%. So I've obviously never done a project like this before. These brackets are in pretty good shape considering what they went through, but they're obviously very dirty. They have some flaking material on here. I don't know if this was paint or the metals just flaking off. I don't know anything about metal. I think the first place to start is to try and clean up these brackets and make sure they can look very nice and finished. So talking with a few people, doing some research online, sandblasting seems to be the best bet. I talked to my friend Justin, who lives just down the road. His YouTube channel is Rainfall Projects. We're gonna head down to his shop. He has a sandblaster, and we're gonna use it and see if we can get these things looking a little better. And then we'll go from there. Justin's a great friend of mine, and he also happens to be my neighbor, which is very convenient because he's got some cool tools that I don't have, like this sandblaster which I've also never used or know how to use. And he wasn't there because he's a farmer, so he was out mowing a field or plowing somewhere. But I let myself in his shop, and before long, I started to figure out how this thing worked. I gotta say, it saved me a lot of time being able to sandblast all the gook and gunk off of this metal. And pretty soon, I had the whole thing cleaned up, and, well, they were looking a lot better than they did when they first came out of the fire. Now, I don't know a lot about metal, but the thing I do know is that if it's just raw, it tends to rust, which I didn't want to happen. So I needed to cover these with something. I thought about just doing a clear coat, but they were still pretty discolored from the fire and had some melted substance on them I just couldn't get off with a sandblaster. 
So I decided just to rattle can on some glossy forest green paint. I think this color will look really nice with a white oak bench seat that I'm gonna make here shortly. It was a nice sunny day outside and I didn't wanna spray paint inside my shop, so I used a few old wired coat hangers to hang the brackets up from the tree and I started layering on the paint. After getting a few coats on the brackets, I left them outside so they could dry and I went into the shop to start working on my wood seat and the back for the bench. Now I'm going to be building this entire thing out of white oak because as far as I could tell, that's what the original bench was made out of. Now the original bench had zero finish on it. It obviously was just left outside to weather and turn a natural gray, which I really liked. So I'm going to do the same thing on this bench. And white oak's a great wood for outdoor use because it stands up really well to weather. And if you don't want to finish it, it will get that natural gray patina, which I prefer. And the plus side is you don't have to maintain a film finish, which nobody wants to do. After cutting down all my parts and pieces, I went over to my assembly table to start laying things out. Now there's going to be four just straight two inch wide pieces. That's going to be the slats for the actual bench seat. And then there's going to be the back of the bench. Now the original bench had a cast aluminum relief. It was an animal scene with lions and bears and tigers, maybe something from Noah's Ark. But the soft aluminum just melted away in the heat of the fire, so I was going to have to come up with something different. I opted for a simple mission style slatted back. To figure out the spacing in between each slat, I just pushed all of my slats together and I measured the distance from the end of my slat to the end of my board. That gave me the total voids between the slats. Then I took that distance, I divided it by the number of voids there were, and I cut spacers to that dimension. Now all I had to do was put a spacer in between each slat and I knew they would all equally be spaced out and I could get everything lined up and marked for dominoes. So after getting all the slats in there with my spacers, well, I lined them up and marked out for dominoes, like I just said a second ago. And then I pulled out my domino joiner and used the patented hip thrust technique to hog out some mortises in both my slats and my two rails. Then before I assembled the back, I wanted to soften all the edges. So I grabbed an eighth inch roundover bit and I just hit every single corner, giving it a nice soft roundover on both my rails as well as my slats. This would be impossible to do after I glued it up, so it's good to do this beforehand. Then I needed to sand everything. And whenever I sand little pieces like this, I always like to grab one of these silicon rockler work mats and lay it down on my workbench. Not only will it keep the pieces from getting all scratched up by my work surface, it also helps keep them from moving all over the place as I'm trying to use the power sander. In no time, I had all the pieces pre-sanded and it was time to assemble. So I just started smearing some glue onto some dominoes and inserting them in those mortises. I decided to use Tight Bond 3 to glue this entire thing up because it is rated for exterior use. Once I had all the dominoes in place with glue smeared on everything, I plopped it all together, tap 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 a -rooski with my mallet, and I stuck it in some clamps. Well, before I stuck it in clamps, I wiped off all the excess glue squeeze out. I wasn't too worried about the squeeze out on this one because like I said, I'm not going to put any finish on this. I'm just leaving it au naturel. After it was dry, I pulled it out of clamps and I rounded over the outside edge of the top and bottom, this time with a half inch round over, just to give it a nice soft edge. Now it was time to actually think about assembling this entire thing. The paint on my brackets were good and dry, so I brought them inside and I started trying to fit this back piece into the brackets, but my measurements must have been a little bit off because the fit was pretty tight. So I did have to cut a little bit off the bottom of the frame on the back piece and add a slight back bevel in order for it to fit. But eventually I got it in there. Now all I had to do was bolt it onto my brackets. So I started out by drilling from the back, not all the way through the piece. This is really just to mark where my bolts need to land. 
Once I had those marks on my back piece, I took it over to the drill press and using a backer board on the bottom so I wouldn't have any blowout, I drilled all the way through giving me nice clean holes. Now obviously I don't have the original bolts for this. Those were lost to the fire. So I picked these up at Home Depot. I just really didn't like how shiny they looked. Fortunately, I know a little trick for that. If you ever want to take new bolts and make them look old, you can pick up some of this gun bluing at any local sports warehouse or gun shop. And all you do is just dunk your bolts right in the bluing Hold them there for a few seconds, and when you pull them out, they have a nice antique looking patina. It's a pretty good trick to have in your back pocket when you're trying to make something look older than it actually is. So after dipping all the bolts in the bluing like I was dipping french fries in ranch dressing, I was ready to assemble the entire piece. My pre-drilled holes were exactly the size of my bolts, so I needed to persuade them to go into the holes with a mallet, but that's okay. Once I got them started, all I had to do was work them into those little bracket pieces on the back of my bench sides, and then I very loosely added a washer and a locking nut. I'll probably go back and brush some bluing onto the nuts as well so they match, but for now, it's totally okay. Once I got one side started, not tightened down yet, I did the same thing to the other side, adding a few more washers and a few more neoprene locking nuts so that they won't come unthreaded. Then I started laying in my seat slats. Now I'm just setting these in place for right now, trying to figure out the spacing and exactly how I want it to look. After I got them all laid in there on top of the brackets, I went around to the back side and from the bottom, using a Sharpie marker, I just marked where I needed to drill all my holes for my bolts simply by sticking the Sharpie right through the pre-drilled holes in the cast iron, like this. Then I took each slat back over to the drill press, again using a backer board so that I'd get a nice clean hole without any blowout. After I had all my seat slats drilled out, really all I had to do was plop in the bolts, add some washers and nuts, and tighten everything down. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. A bench this small will hurt my kneesies. Anyways. With all my bolts inserted, I tightened down all my nuts, and just like that, the bench was done. Now to see if it's strong enough to hold me. Because if it'll hold me, it'll definitely hold a little kid. Unless they're a really ginormous little kid, but then they wouldn't be a little kid. They'd technically be a big kid. Even if they were young, they'd still be a big kid because of their size. Sorry, I'm getting way off topic. I really love how this bench turned out, and hopefully my mom will too. It may not be a huge piece, but the fact that we were able to salvage at least something from the fire should mean a lot. All right, we are on my way to my mom's house. We're gonna drop this thing off, and hopefully she likes it. She's probably gonna be like, I don't even remember that bench. No, I know she remembers it. <laughs> yeah. It's not overall, look at that! That's the bench from the fire. I rebuilt it. Oh my goodness. What do you think? That's awesome. I'll take it up to the New River house. Something survived. I know, and it's beautiful. The brackets are a little warped. Yeah, well, they went through fire. <laughs> but it's still structurally sound. You can sit, you can sit on it? Oh, can I sit on oh, it too? Sure. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, my goodness. I wondered why you had those out, and you told me you were trying to figure out where to put them. Well, I wanted to be surprised. I know, you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> you like it? I love it. That's better than it was, because it was falling apart. Yeah, well, that's probably why it burns so easy. Well, I don't think it had to... Hmm. That is fantastic. Moms, they're special, and I sure do love mine. I wasn't able to replace all the damage that was caused by the fire, but at least I was able to give her just a small bit of restoration. 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Check the links down in the video descriptions, all the products and tools that we use. There's also a link down there to our Patreon page. If you're not signed up on Patreon, you guys are missing out on a ton of extra content, behind the scenes, live question and answers. And next week, I'll actually be in Boston doing a build with one of our patrons. Because twice a year, all of our patrons get a chance to win me coming out to their shop. I don't know why that's a prize, but they seem to like it. And we build a project together. So click the link, go to Patreon, sign up. See you guys next week.